If you're anything like me, uh, you love new computer graphics research and you want to try out the newest papers as soon as they're available. Uh, and for triangle splatting, if you go to YouTube right now, and this is the reason I'm making the tutorial, both Unreal and Blender don't have any tutorials if you sort by this month. And if you sort by regular, it's all about Gaussian splatting because that was the paper that kind of led to this newer research. Um, so I'm going to go through the import process as quickly as possible, and then I'll mention some of the caveats along the way as well as at the end for those who are interested in more of the details. Uh, but basically, you're going to go to my GitHub, you're going to grab this Blender Python script, um, copy it to your clipboard, then you can open up Blender, and we are just going to go to a text editor so that we can paste it in. Uh, so I'm just going to delete everything in the basic scene. I am going to create a new file, paste it in there, and uh, we can... Uh, copy the path on your disk. So you will need to find the file on your disk, hold shift, right click, uh, and then copy as path, and that'll get the absolute path to the file on your disk. And then we can just go ahead and paste that uh, and replace any backslashes with forward slashes. So now that we have that, we can run the script, and it should take about 30 seconds to import on an SSD if you're using the garden file. Um, if it takes longer than 10 minutes with the spinny wheel, uh, and you have a hard drive, it is probably still working, but I mean, uh, feel free to drop a comment down below if you're running into any issues and I'll do my best to help out. Um, you can also check the log, uh, which is in the system console for any uh, errors that might've popped up. Um, but yeah, now I've got this in here, it's got the vertex colors. So um, I'm going to just orient it properly first. So I added a new plane, I'm gonna scale it up. And then I'll just kind of align that with the ground after I switch to orbiting around the 3D cursor. Um, so we're just going to keep rotating. And this is feeling pretty flat. And uh, I'm just going to go to the top view, bring it to the center. Rotate a little bit more. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. Oh, no, I've messed it up. All right, that looks pretty flat. So I'm going to go to the top view with 5.7, um, and then I can uh, rotate it to be kind of square. Um, and now it's in Blender at the place that I want it to be. All right, Blender had crashed on me for whatever reason, so I'm just going to hide that um, and uh, show you how to make it look uh, properly. So I'm just going to switch to the GPU compute. You don't need to do that just for a faster preview. Uh, I'm going to add a material. I'm going to switch it to an emissive. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the color input, switch it to a color attribute. And this is the vertex color attribute that the um, OFF file has. So once it's imported, uh, you can switch it to the uh, rendered view. And now you can see this is how it looks uh, within Blender. So this is how you would get it into Blender, and uh, you'll notice that none of these triangles have any opacity on them. That's just kind of the way that the researchers have uh, created the OFF files and sort of how it's going to work both in Blender and Unreal. Uh, down the line, there should be some sort of opacity controls as well, which will lead to much higher uh, visual results, higher quality visual results. But to get this into Blender or Unreal, what you're going to want to do is select the mesh, hit, uh, I'm actually going to con uh, freeze all the transforms with control A, all transforms, uh, and I'm going to file uh, export as an FBX. Uh, I'm going to put it on the D drive and I'll name it uh, outdoor. And I'm just going to select the selected objects. And then as far as the vertex colors go, down in the geometry settings, you'll see vertex colors. You're going to want to switch that to linear for the proper color uh, within the material that I create in Unreal. Uh, there's ways to do it with sRGB too, but it's just not going to look proper the way that I'm showing. So uh, outdoor.fbx is now exporting. Now we can switch over to Unreal. We can right click. We can import. We're going to find that fbx, open it, and it's going to import it. 
So I'm going to disable Nanite um, on this because I think that uh, Nanite doesn't really make sense for these, uh, at least the way that I'm showing. So, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of explain more about that at the end. Um, I'll actually just disable Nanite after because I can't find out in the import setting right now. One thing that's important is you want vertex color to uh, replace. So you can hit import and it's going to take a little bit to build the static mesh. All right, so now that they're imported and um, in Unreal, I'm just gonna I'm gonna create a new level. It's gonna be a completely empty level, and uh, I had already disabled Manite, so I'm just gonna drag it into the level, uh, and I will zero out that transform. Um, it's generated a collision by default, so when you go into play mode, it's gonna pop your character up on top. But I'll go over how to get around that as well. So this is the material that it brought over from Blender. We're just gonna delete all that. I'm going to switch it to a unlit material. And then uh, what I need to do is just look for a vertex color uh, attribute. We can go drop that into the emissive, hit save, and you'll notice, bam, all right, that looks just like it should. Um, so this is triangle splatting in Unreal. Uh, you've got the object in here now. Now I'm going to go into some more of the details and caveats with this, uh, as well as sort of performance metrics. Um, so Unreal Engine definitely isn't the best engine for high FPS values. Uh, if I go to the triangle splitting uh, GitHub page, um, actually, sorry, the, uh, their, yeah, their GitHub IO, um, you'll notice that down here, they mention that the FPS readings that they're getting is upwards of 2000 FPS on a at a 720p on a 4090. In Unreal, you're not going to quite get that because there's a lot of uh, more expensive behind the scenes stuff that happens over a very basic triangle render, which is what I'm assuming that they used here. Um, additionally, it's not 2800 FPS with the uh, opacity on these triangles, uh, everything that we're seeing in Unreal is a sharp triangle. So there is no fall off, which is helping get those very soft and uh, better looking things. If you show down here, like the, you'll notice that these are much better than the 3D Gaussian splatting, but you're not gonna see quite that quality in Unreal. Uh, and the reason for that is because you don't have, you, you can't take advantage of that opacity. So because everything's a hard, uh, sharp line, you would need a lot more triangles to get the same level of quality. That being said, there will be opacity supported eventually, but the thing that I'm showing you now doesn't support that. Um, so let's go back to Unreal to go over some of the settings. Um, so in the scene, uh, I'm just using an emissive material and I'm not expecting it to interact with anything else. So what you'll want to do is add a post process volume. Um, and you'll want to set that to infinite extent. And we're going to disable lumen, um, because it's not going to help us whatsoever. And it's going to add a lot of overhead to the rendering process. Uh, I'm also actually going to disable bloom. Um, while I'm at it, uh, I'm going to disable auto exposure. So we'll basically just set that to uh, zero and zero. Make sure we're in game settings. Uh, I'm going to turn off, uh, the vignetting as well. Um, we can go down to the global illumination. We're going to turn it to none. Also in the reflections, none. And this is just going to help improve our FPS um, as we are kind of checking out what the performance we're getting on real is. Um, so now that we have all of that, let's check on show FPS. We'll see we're at 120. Um, so I'm going to go actually T max FPS and change that to 480. 
so that we're not capped anymore. Um, and when I full screen it, uh, you'll notice, um, oh, I guess screen percentage is already at 100. Um, but if I go into play mode, uh, actually on the post process, I'm also going to disable motion blur. So now that I've got all those settings in the post process, they're not necessary. They're just kind of what I would recommend for checking out these, these splat files. Um, if I go into play mode, uh, there is a bounding box on this for collision. So I'm going to actually disable that. I'm going to go to collision. Uh, I'm going to change it to no collision and now I'll be able to fly around it a little bit more, more accurately. I'm actually going to set this to zero for exposure compensation. So when I go into play mode, uh, I can now kind of fly around with the WAS and D keys. Um, another thing I want to note is that um, you can use the tilde key and do uh, r.anti-aliasing method. And I like setting that to one for this instead of temporal because it uh, it looks, uh, it doesn't make as much sense to be using temporal anti-aliasing when you have this many triangles kind of all sort of interpenetrating with each other. I think this ends up looking way better. Um, another little uh, thing that I use is R dot screen percentage. Uh, and you do, you access the console with the tilde key. Um, and I set that to a hundred. I think by default, um, it'll be like 60 or something. This is Unreal likes to use um, upscaling. And you'll see all these little jaggeds uh, on your screen. Um, but if you set it to 100, uh, those should go away. And it'll be a lot a lot less stair steady. Um, so uh, at 4K, you'll see that I'm getting about 300 FPS-ish um, on a 5090. Um, so that's pretty good. But like uh, I mentioned, Unreal is definitely not the optimal game engine to be viewing all of these triangles in. And uh, I also wouldn't recommend turning on Nanite for this. Um, and the reason for that is because Nanite works best when it has continuous services. If you do really want to use Nanite and experiment with that, what I would recommend doing is turning on Preserve Area, which kind of will um, collapse triangles and make them larger as it sort of collapses. It's kind of recommended for foliage and that's kind of how this triangle splat looks um, in terms of like topology. It's uh, very similar to like what the foliage optimizations are for Nanite. Um, now, some other notes, uh, let me try to think. Um, the big thing with triangle splatting and Gaussian splatting is file size. So if you're trying to do animated uh, Gaussian splats or, or um, triangle splats, having a lot of VRAM is a huge uh, boost, but you're even still going to need most likely some sort of uh, either a very large fast disk drive or, um, or a, to write a compression algorithm for triangle splatting to get 4D splatting working at a decent frame rate. Uh, and the reason for that is if you check out the size map, um, and you'll see on disk it's only 120 megabytes, but when it comes into memory, which is what it looks like on your GPU, you're looking at over a quarter of a gigabyte, so over a third of a gigabyte actually. So you'd only be able to get three frames per gigabyte on, on this outdoor scene. Granted, this is like 1.5 million triangles or something like that, which is a lot, um, and not all 4D Gaussian splat uh, use cases will need that many triangles. But uh, you're you're going to be very limited in uh, 4D splatting um, because you're going to need to stream a third of a gigabyte per frame, which is going to limit you pretty pretty heavily, especially if you don't have a, a huge super fast NVMe. So be on the lookout for more papers down the line that offer some sort of uh, 4D compression algorithm that allows these splats to come down in size and actually run on GPUs. Um, but yeah, you'd only be able to fit, even on this 5090 that I'm running on, um, 
a couple hundred at or about a hundred frames at most before you would need to grab more stuff off disc, um, which just isn't realistic for anything uh, long form. Um, also, if you're getting lower than 300 FPS at 4K, that's totally normal. I have a 5090, so that's pretty much a best case scenario. Um, and if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, and like I said, the big caveat here is all of these triangles are completely solid, whereas if you really want that really good noise values that are beating the Gaussian splatting noise values, um, you're going to need to use leverage the opacity as well, and that just isn't available. Um, the test files for you to grab uh, that they have provided is on Google Drive, and you can grab them on their GitHub page uh, at this link, um, and those are those OFF files that I am experimenting off of. Um, If you're training your own splats, uh, you're going to probably want to go down here and uh, read the game engine section. So there's this train game engine.py, which is this is specifically used uh, or modified to work based off of full opacity triangles. Um, so it'll create things that are better for the optimized uh, version. Um, or for the game engine version, rather than uh, having like the opacity help with the, the noise. Um, and then you'll need to use this to uh, do the conversion. I haven't tested it, uh, but it should be pretty straightforward. But for getting, for training for the game engine, essentially what you're going to want to do is rather than run Python uh, train.py, you do Python train game engine.py and then run with the same uh, input. Um, and I'm not going to go over how to train your own, but I'll link to a tutorial that shows how to train uh, down below. Let me know if you have any other questions.